Um, All right, so what so, do we got coming up next, Ryan? We've got not one, not two, but three speakers are coming in the house. I'm particularly excited about this because I am the kind of person who eats pancakes for all meals. Breakfast is my jam. Uh, we've got Holger Winkleman. I'm going to mispronounce these. Y'all correct me, okay? No Holger Winkleman, Timo Lindhorst, and Renee Meyer from right. Travel Ping, Travel Ping, and IBM Cloud. How do you do? Very good. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, we have random questions before each talk then that you have been unprepared for, which which you're welcome. And this one is for whoever would like it. Uh, what is the first large scale network you broke and how? Was it BGP or DNS? Oh, for me personally, it was a large scale BGP network in Munich in late 90s. Late 90s, you broke Munich, yeah. <laughs> and how did you do it? What did you do? Oh, that was quite some fun because we're collecting data from some counters over SNMP and uh, wrote a script in the lab and then it was about to bring it to production and tested there but we haven't calculated that we have 600,000 routes in the internet and uh, we get out for lunch and leave it run because it leaves a while and after half an hour the phone ring up and the, the router literally stopped forwarding packets because he was asking for snmp routes and mm -hmm. yeah yeah basically this was a lot of fun but we have learned a lot and um yeah <laughs> That's that's where we are today. <laughs> yeah, lessons were learned. What about you, Renee? Are you Timo? I broke only my home network. Yeah, once. Uh, <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> Which during uh, COVID could be enterprise in, in impacting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how did you do oh. that? I misconfigured my switch at home, so I have all my house. I all. Um, Built my network uh, for myself. So as I built the house, I um, laid the, the lines and so on, and um, the switch and everything like this. But then I tried something new, and uh, it broke everything. And I had to reset the firmware and the switch and so on. This was really strange thing what happened. Huh? So, oh. but it's, it's very important because my wife also works at home in COVID time, and then the network is. I'm responsible. I'm the IT guy. <laughs> yeah, and that's why yep. I need to. Care you guys, you care. <laughs> and what about you, Timo? Actually, I cannot think about really breaking a network. I'm more the guy that is uh, shutting himself out of a remote host by shutting down SSH for root login or something. That actually happened in preparation for this demo one time. So I'm more into this kind of uh, failure. <laughs> I, I will be honest that networking is not my thing. And I tend to be the one that runs away screaming when someone says, switch router mm. but i am the person here at this house who takes care of the network so when it breaks i i, I microsoft windows it i turn it off and back on again and hope maybe sacrifice a chicken but you know you do what you got to do all right so today i closed the schedule so look at that <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about a uh, mobile core for breakfast. Thank you, Tom. Um, and I, I am no longer hungry because I did eat my pancakes right before proximity started. So Holger, Timo, Renee, take it away. Okay. Thanks a lot for the intro and let's start. Now, what it means uh, mobile core for breakfast, that's basically all about building a mobile core network for carriers for mobile operators around the world and uh, do it in the way uh, we like to do it in 2020 and how we do it in 2020 and 2021. We use services, we use the cloud, we use APIs. And that's basically all about that we have today on the menu, us from Travelping being in the business for about 10 years already. We partnered up with Equinix Metal, of course, uh, for bare metal provisioning of 
data center resources and also the fabric which is used. Um, other partners like IBM Cloud helping us to deploy a global network um, API and driven. So there is no, there's no manual intervention. We can spin it up. Um, partnered with Red Hat and OpenShift to give us a runtime environment where we can run modern VNFs and CNFs, basically cloud network functions. And that's exactly what the industry, what the 5G is looking for. And the idea with this breakfast was, can we do it uh, for brunch? Can we do it in a couple of hours? Can we do it in a couple of minutes? And yeah, as we know, uh, we are here at Equinix Metal. We can spin up a server in one minute or five minutes or four minutes. We can spin up servers in IBM Cloud in minutes, two hours. We can deploy clusters, OpenShift clusters, Kubernetes clusters in literally 40 minutes. And we can deploy a packet gateway running on top of that also in minutes, maybe it takes 10 minutes to get it up. So if you have a long breakfast, if you spend some time, this should work. So that's how it looked like. Um, I said we are networking, so it gets a little bit complex. We have always a topology. We have a great network around the world. We can leverage Equinix Fabric, which connects a number of data centers. I think the metal guys know more how many there are. I don't have the numbers here, but you're open for questions. Um, but that's not all. Yeah, you you connect bare metal. You connect server literally to networks. And we are living in a cloud native world. Uh, Troublepink has decided some years ago already, this was at Kubernetes 1.2, 1.3 times, that for network services like building a mobile core, building a VPN router, building SD1, and all this, all this highlights we have today, uh, we won't invest in another CLI. We won't invest in another management plane basically because at this time four years ago kubernetes was on the edge was growing and we decided let's have a look at this and um, invest in kubernetes and cloud native technologies and therefore wrap everything we have and software into containers into pods and bring it in this way to to the resources to the servers to the data centers and therefore to the network and leverage this technology uh, for lifecycle management, the rollouts, configuration, and so on, and so on. Because that's basically what makes a product out of a piece of software. Yeah? You need to be able to deploy it. You need to be able to update it. You need to be able to configure it. You need to be able to make failover scenarios, et cetera, et cetera. That all comes with Kubernetes, or at least as well foreseeable in this in, at this time. Since last year, I think it's a common standard. CNFs are the common standard. A lot of uh, network equipment um, companies like us moving over there. And so we, we are on the right train at this, at this time. And I think two years ago, three years ago, I don't remember anymore exactly, but that's why we met um, our packet, which was becoming Equinix Metal now. I met some clever guys, Jacob and Zach, hello. And um, this was really fun because uh, they speak the same language, etc. We had a lot of fun. And, and up to today, we never lost the connection. We met a couple of times in, in Netherlands and in Amsterdam and Utrecht. And after two years, three years, so finally we go and um, deploy some live systems there and some some staging systems there and that brought us to the idea hey for the proximity event let's let's start up the whole thing and bring an ecosystem together build around apis build around the menu and show how easy it can be to do a complex thing like mobile core uh, for carriers in 2021 by pinging a few apis and that's what it's all about here. Oh, what, what we do, there's someone looking for network connectivity and there's someone who wants to build network connect connectivity. It's usually the carrier. It's usually the guys uh, want to go to the cloud 
as 5G, by the way, is dictating more or less. But anyhow, and, and that's a total different thing for them. And uh, what we do is we have mapped a blueprint and we call it Sensover, like cloud enabled network service operations, which is a network service operations concept, which is built solely on cloud. Uh, so there is no SNMP around anymore. There is no CLI. It's solely based around cloud and APIs. Now, how we do it? So we are on the mayor track of proximity. Though so, uh, obviously we are in Amsterdam here because this has some history for us and our friends. And what we have done? So we created a Equinix Metal instance uh, and deployed an OpenShift cluster on it. That basically abstracts away all the nitty gritty details of different hardware, etc., and gives a clear API to run a payload on top of that. And what is a payload? The payload is our packet core gateway PCG, which is managed by an operator coming out of the operator SDK, which is compatible to the OpenShift runtime environment, which comes out of the partnership between Red Hat and the runtime environment, um, also in Equinix Metal. And out of that, we spawn a blueprint of network connectivity, plumped everything together, put us to the interfaces uh, of, of the Equinix fabric, and spawn up a packet core APN instance. And the guys from telecom, they know what I mean. Uh, hopefully, that are the things terminating mobile, mobile connectivity. So. I think maybe 50, 70% on this show watching us with mobile connectivity on mobile devices, and that's basically what you use. And Timo will show it later. I think he has a phone in the hand already to make this all happen. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and so you need to manage all of that. How you do it globally? That's where Rene comes in, yeah? Because we have this, uh, satellite management concept, uh, which is pioneered by, by, by IBM. And this is a system which can orchestrate many, many Kubernetes cluster on OpenShift clusters in any location around the world. And this is not tied solely to IBM locations. This is obviously also working with Equinix location as we just seen, but any other location where we can spin up bare metal host uh, could be managed by IBM Cloud. So this was the second piece of the menu, how to do that. Rene, want to do some words here quickly? Thank you, Holger. So Satellite is basically a concept to establish a so-called distributed cloud. That means you can uh, schedule um, and deploy um, OpenShift clusters and other services following as managed service to your own hardware. This could be a metal servers in your data center, that could be virtualized systems, that could be other hyperscalers. And um, the satellite uh, controls um, um, the management part of it. You can update your OpenShift versions, you can update the worker nodes, and you get a fully managed service uh, with your own hardware and there where you would like to process your, your data and you would like to run your applications. And that re reduces the complexity and deployment of uh, managing your own clusters and your, your own infrastructure with this way. Okay, thank you, Rene. I just carried on because we are with ABM Cloud now, obviously we have a second location and that's uh, located in Frankfurt, uh, not in Amsterdam. And that's uh, one example where we can leverage public cloud service. In this case, obvious choice. It's a classic classic environment of IBM Cloud. And we deploy it's a second cluster here. And here, same appears. We can bring up we can bring up a packet gateway. We can connect it to the global GRX network. This is where every mobile operator met. So that's the yellow world, you know, the, the yellow gateway, what we see here. And um, if we want, and Verizon is happy with that, we can run in Frankfurt an instance for them. Yeah, and that's nice. So, but we are going further, we're going in the 5G direction, and we will go much, much, much more distributed as this cloud hyperscaler can give us. Why? Because we have low latency requirements in 5G, and uh, the locations getting 
smaller and smaller and smaller and highly distributed. Yeah, we foresee thousands of clusters, thousands of uh, locations, thousands of edge and far edge locations where run services will run or packet core services will run and they can locate it literally anywhere and because we have some partners here in in in, in hamburg he was uh pioneering with us and and stepping up and say okay i enable a good old co a good old central office a good old data center on prem and what we do exactly the same we deploy an OpenShift cluster we deploy our packet gateways we connect them to a grx network and you literally have very local connectivity with very local uh, uh low latency to the next radio base station on the roof of the building in example and in the end you deploy a kubernetes workload managed by an operator coming from the um, from the helm shards coming from the operation lab second manager which is all built in an open shift and so it's literally installing an app if you can install an app on your phone you literally can install a packet gateway that's not a three months rollout activity anymore so this all comes together in a bigger network, as you can see, um, and you see the Equinix fabric. This is a totally API driven uh, construct where you can uh, literally connect the whole world, all data center, all campuses. That's growing and growing. And this gives us so much because we basically make a couple of API calls and can spin up network connections around the world, bringing up the services for the telcos as a managed service or giving them this as a tool set so they can run it yourself. And we have the blueprint for these guys to make it as simple as web application or iOS applications to run. So this is also an overview and let's dig a little bit deeper in here. So uh, because we are on a geek show, we are on a tech show, uh, we, let's, let's go a little bit deeper and show how such topology needs to be built. And um, that's basically what we've done in Hamburg. We have a good old friend there. He, he is so okay, stepping up. I do real bare metal, I do it, I'm still, there with the racks and the screws and put it in and he brought up a manual bare metal uh, uh, environment where uh, we partnered up and uh, installed the cluster basically we started this week with that yeah so it was not a three months preparation but basically we installed the cluster and uh, uh, connected it through the internet connected it to the private network and uh, started our software gateways and here we go that's uh that's it's the edge location that's how it calls this day it's edge and of course there is equinix metal and um we have done the same in uh amsterdam and that's lazy bare metal yeah that's much easier yeah that there is no no much work around that you press a button or you make an api call and literally minutes later you have a uh, six servers sitting in amsterdam and um being plugged into the topology and um same story cluster installation etc so and that's basically where i can hand over to uh, my colleagues to show a little bit more how this might look like Hey, Timo, you can. Sure, yeah. Let me share my screen and I will start over from there. So, neat. So, let's uh, have a look closer look to how such a APN is actually defined and deployed. So actually to bring such thing up, you need to define some, like how the resources look like. So some general parameters, let me enlarge the screen a little bit more. Um, so there are some kind of like who's into Kubernetes might recognize it. So there are some generic Kubernetes related settings like we can define affinity to put the workloads to a dedicated host. Maybe that is related to where we have the correct networking that we actually need, add some additional labels or additional meta information. 
Then uh, the XLAN controller is actually a cluster overlay network which we use to run on top of the port network to build uh, service function chains. However, for this demo that we created here, we actually disabled it. Um, then there is some more definition about the network interfaces because we kind of have dedicated network connectivity domains like the GRX network, which is the global routing exchange in which all the telecom carriers appear, like the internet, but a dedicated one for the global carriers. And other networks, uh, we can might have a look closer to that later. In principle, IPv6 would be enabled, but for the demo case, we didn't use it. And then there is the APN name. So the APN name is basically the identifier of that APN to find it within this GRX network. Um, then there are like the main configuration for the main components, the SMC and the UPG, like we have seen here. So this is the SMC as the control plane component. And then there is the UPG as the user plane component implementing the in the uh, 5G case, a SMF and a UPF uh, function, network function, um, with a dedicated um, some settings. So MCC, MNC is also in this domain of mobile operators, some identifiers identifying the respective um, network operator. And then like the APN name and the combination of these parameters is used within the GRX network for a DNS resolution to actually then resolve to a global unique IP address under which the PDN gateway serves the network service for this particular APN. Then there's some additional routing information like where to find the gateway. Also, this might look familiar for those who have worked with Kubernetes and especially multi-network. So this is a definition which is picked up by Multus. Multus is a uh, Meta CNI, which allows to have within a Kubernetes port more than one ne network, so multiple secondary networks, which we actually use, especially for this CNF function chaining. Uh, then the UPG, so the user plane with a similar notation, also some attaching to some networks. So we need GRX network, we need SGI network, um, some routing configuration. And similar, also the user plane components attached to the GRX network to actually receive the payload traffic then from the mobile devices. And then at least we can configure IP pools that should be used. Um, this is, for instance, the IP range assigned to the mobile devices. So if you attach your phone to such an APN, then you will receive and be assigned an IP address of this range and also typically DNS service, which you need to get actually internet access with resolution. So this is roughly how you define a, a resource for an APN. And then once, if you deploy it, uh, that is what we already have prepared. Now I'm switching over to this view. So this is uh, the web UI or the web console of Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform. So as for your initial set already, we base our applications on Red Hat. So a certified enterprise ready Kubernetes distribution. Underneath, it's just Kubernetes. So everything working with Kubernetes does also work with OpenShift, but it has a lot of like additional tools and frameworks and integrations, especially like for, for lifecycle management uh, for both the, the, the infrastructure as well as the, the workloads. And it also has a nice web UI to show what actually is happening in the platform is deployed. And so if we take a look at the workloads, so the deployments actually, we can see here some components. So the main components, the SMC, UPG, CGW, APN, switching back to the architecture view. So SMC, UPG, CGW. And now like if a device has a session, then traffic will come in via the user plane and be routed and nutted on the CGW. So this is where we will now take a closer look to. So this CGW, APN. I can go to the pod and even have some fancy browser-based terminal window, actually. So here, for instance, we can see that multiple interfaces are used, which is not the standard Kubernetes pod case, but like for, for network function chaining, you often need it. And now if we run a uh, actually capture, 
provide CMP traffic on the SGI interface. And I will take now my phone, which is actually connected to the, that APN already. I could look up the IP address, which is a sign I would like to share with you. So it's the 213.69 in the end. And now if I start pinging on my phone, actually, this is where we see the traffic going through. So from the re-IP towards the um, 9999, which is actually the host that I ping to. And yeah, basically that's it. So that is a cloud native mobile core packet gateway operated on OpenShift Kubernetes cluster. And for those who are not that excited about a single ping and uh, watching TCP dump output, actually we also have like a different kind of view. So um, if you deploy our PCG, then you also get the dashboards and this nicely integrates with OpenShift because in OpenShift it's easy to have like Grafana, it brings the Grafana operator and then the dashboard is just an additional resource that is deployed. So this is just a test APN. So this is like my single lonely session. I'm the only one attached to that APN. But beside that, you would see like in a live production and then some real more interesting number than on this um, yeah, test APN. But like bringing metrics for the main interfaces and exactly in the way as like cloud native people are used to. So it's integrated in Prometheus and Grafana. So you can use your tools that you are anyway using in a cloud native world to run a PCG as just some cloud native application. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Timo. Um, so basically, maybe a, a final question here, which really uh, interests me, of course, because we are looking forward to partner up in this ecosystem. Uh, Rene, um, what uh, what about this uh, IBM telco uh, thing you're doing? I think you are addressing this market directly. Yeah? So you really want to want to grow in the telco space and have an ecosystem established. Yes. So um, what is um, um, interesting, um, how we would like to support this is the technology um, the satellite is enabled for. Yeah? So maybe I can share what we are doing with, with satellite to enable special use cases in the telco industry. So the idea is that we bring, um, so I'll share my desktop. The idea is that we can easily bring modern workload like this containerized network functions um, at any place where we would like. And um, the idea is then to use therefore satellite as transport utility. So the idea of satellite is at any location you would like to have, you could have your own open shift clusters fully managed by IBM cloud. And the location could be another cloud, yeah, another hyperscaler from our um, other vendors um, who have in public cloud services, it could be your own data center. And you can use the same uh, look and feel, the same management, the same, um, um, uh, um, uh, same Kubernetes environment, OpenShift environment to deploy your applications and connect those microservices running on those clusters and fully manage this together. Yeah? And that's what we did here in our example. We um, deploy it for this uh, different locations, um, so-called satellite locations. Yeah? And satellite locations uh, can be your own data center, could be another cloud. And then when we go to such a location, a such location could consist out of different hosts. And host could be the bare metal machines we have seen here, or hypervisor machines. And then you can register those machines. And these machines then can be used to provide your managed services. And so we can bring the, the worker nodes, the clusters, and the container workload needed for such telecommunication use cases to the places where the data needs to be processed. Yeah? And so you can have your clusters, which you usually only see in the cloud, this uh, can have the same look and feel for your clusters, um, 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 even if they run on premise. So when we have looking here on the cluster, which is OpenShift, it's fully managed from the IBM cloud, but it's running in such a location we have seen from Holger and Timo. And now I can 
uh, open this cluster, I can work with the cluster normally, I can use the console, I can use special operators also for networking, like this SIV operator we use also in our POC here for package gateways. So um, I can bring the power of OpenShift very quickly with satellite to any location anywhere in the world. This is the idea, and this is supports a lot of telco use cases uh, using this technology. All right, thank you. I think I want some questions. Thank you very much. Uh, we've had a whole bunch of comments. Uh, first of all, congratulating you on the first live demo of the day, and it didn't break, so well done. Uh, yeah. Two quick questions. First of all, does Travel Ping, I guess, run its own VEPC or VRAM management software, or are you using open source standards? That's from either Dave's hack or Dave Shack. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question. It's, it's great. And uh, basically, both is true because we own the open source software. So we are contributing and using and uh, have uh, developed for the last five, six years uh, VEPC software, mainly Packet Gateway, UPF, SMF, all this nice abbreviation you see in the 3GPP standards. And um, that's where we grown up from. Yeah? And then we decided to package them into a container ecosystem, and that's where all the Kubernetes story comes along. Um, beside of that, of course, uh, a system also has a lot of other components uh, uh, which are not coming from at, us. But that's the beauty of an ecosystem uh, like Cloud Native. You can bring them together in a lingua franca. And um, yeah, so means TLDR, we own the software, but it's open source. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Holger. We've got one more question from Daniel Beza, who says, question for Travel Ping, can you share why you chose to use IBM Cloud versus other alternatives without making Herr Mayer blush too much? Was it the OpenShift <laughs> connection or was it before the acquisition? No, no, that's, that was uh, even going back in 2017, 2018, where we had a feasibility study for demand to deploy uh, a global location in Asia Pacific. And uh, the feasibility study back then has rendered only at this time uh, a packet, which was not acquired by Equinix at this time, uh, and uh, IBM to be technically feasible be because of the capabilities having bare metal nodes, real layer two VLANs, real networking, and not just this HTTP oriented concepts uh, the hyperscaler had back then. And um, and that brought us quickly to IBM because there was no location. Uh, Seoul is just opened in uh, now in, in metal, but uh, at this time there was no location, which uh, literally uh, was IBM left on the table. <laughs> All right, fantastic. That's all we got time for in terms of questions today. However, could we invite you to go and join the community Slack at slack.equinixmetal.com? I'm sure there are going to be a whole bunch of people in there that want to ask other questions about the talk. Um, and you're getting a lot of praise here. I'm seeing excellent demos. Thank you for the presentation, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, one more question came in that we may be able to fit in. Are you leveraging direct link to connect your metal to IBM Cloud? Mm, yeah, I know what you mean. The other way around, yes, of course, we leverage a direct, uh, direct link to connect the mobile core network where you've seen the yellow bubble. That's basically the mobile core network. That's where uh, the base stations are. That's where the traffic coming in from the mobiles. And this uh, traffic needs to be injected and brought to the metal uh, and to the uh, to the bare metal machine in IBM Cloud. So that's a direct link. But Fabric, an example, uh, uh, it's a hub between all direct links. Yeah? So Fabric can then connect all others, including direct link IBM and others to spin a meta network, which connects uh, a different cloud provider or even on-prem or other campuses where, wherever you, you want to go. <clears throat> Fantastic. All right, Holger, Timo, Rene, thank you so much for your talk today and for, like I said, the first working demo of the day. Let there be many. Uh, we're going to switch over to our next speaker now, which is